I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Welcome to Live Your Best Life with me, of course, Liz Wright. And in today's episode, I wanted to give you guys a bit of an update as to what's going on in our ministry world and an experience that we're actually having at the moment that's at Jesus's initiation and is really supernatural and is bearing incredible fruit. And to just share with you some of the um, the encounters that are happening, the testimonies that are happening, the revelation that Jesus is breathing into me at this time it that is for the all of us it's for the bride corporately but there's a particular um environment that he is inviting us to uh, inviting you today to be part of that is is where he's actually um working out these encounters and this revelation so just to give you a little bit of a backstory in september some of you may have heard me share this initially, but in September, Jesus spoke to me very clearly. And he said, if you will create a place for me, a space for me, I will come. And I knew it was a very holy invitation. And so because we were all, you know, we were in varying stages of lockdown around the nations, I thought we can't actually create this as a sort of church environment or conferences or whatever but we would have to create it in the digital space which is what we've done so following jesus his invitation to do this what's happened is we've burst what's now called the international mentoring community that some of you may well be part of i'm sure some of you are um and some those of you that are not aware of this i just want I, I really i really feel in jesus heart and i want to extend an invitation to you to be to come on board and be part of this because it really is an amazing safe international community the supernatural community and what's happening is just for everybody it's an amazing and I, I don't want anybody to miss out i'm so passionate about it because of the fruit and what i'm seeing as people's lives are transforming it's just extraordinary and the people the family all over the world that are part of it I think we've got about 17 nations now involved and hundreds of you um, involved and hundreds of people involved. Um, but yeah, I don't want anybody to miss out because it's so full of love and empowerment and encouragement and miracles that are happening. So we set that up and it's going really, really well. And then shortly after we set it up, Jesus came to me again and he enabled me to feel something of what it's like for his heart when we desire to be with him and that's my why for why we're carrying on doing this because i was undone i felt something of how much joy how much love jesus has for us and how much joy he experiences when we just simply with our weak and willing little hearts our tiny attempts to love him when we do that and we move towards him, it really overwhelms him. And of course, then that enables us to, to we realize we actually can move the heart of God just by simply desiring to be with him. And so he, he gave me that experience that was specifically to do with us gathering together at his feet, at his invitation in the international mentoring community. But of course, it's a, it's a, it's the truth for all of us. Just that desire that you have in your heart for more of him overwhelms him. It kisses the heart of Jesus. It brings him pleasure. And um, and of course, he desires that we would truly understand how and, and experience how much he actually loves us. And so and and then, as he gave me that fresh encounter. He also reminded me of an experience that I had a number of years ago with him where I also um, learnt this truth. And I was in a time of worship. Jesus suddenly uh, pulled me up in the spirit and I found myself standing in heaven. And in this experience, 
I had no conscious awareness connection to my life here. I was fully immersed in this experience. I was in what looked like an enormous throne room in heaven and I was frozen to the spot. And I couldn't move because I was so overwhelmed, terrified, overwhelmed uh, because I was fully there. And then obviously Holy Spirit knew that I was frozen to the spot. And so he supernaturally moved me to the front. All along one side of the room, I saw cloud, many from the cloud of witnesses. And I knew immediately in my spirit, they were all part of a company of Esther's. And they, they were people that had understood how loved we are by God, how loved we are by Jesus and the favor that we have in our lives while they walk the earth. And of course, like you see in the book of Esther with King Xerxes, um, you know, and there's so much revelation embedded into that story for us with regards to Jesus and his bride and how much favor we have. And of course, in that story in the book of Esther, the scepter was extended to Esther as she made her request, as she petitioned the king out of her relationship with him, out of the love that she trusted, the love that they had for each other. She trusted their relationship and she she petitioned on the on behalf of her people, of course, the favor of the king to grant her request. And so that speaks to us of the favor that we have of Jesus, right? And so the part that I wanted to draw out right now for you guys and what Jesus reminded me of was I was I was moved to the front and I saw Jesus and he leant towards me and I reached up in my hand and I touched his face. And in that moment, liberated, literally liberated in the atmosphere of heaven, I began to worship, screaming, literally screaming, just uh, set free in that moment, like I say, by the atmosphere of heaven, by the presence of God, to, to express the true love that I have for him. And so I was crying and screaming and just pouring out love. And... Um, and what happened is I, I realized Jesus just sat there and he was absorbing my love. Now, in life, because of my soul journey and the, you know, the bumps and bruises that happen to us every day and the difficulties that we walk through, we can feel very compromised in our love for Jesus. We can feel that it's very weak. But in the atmosphere of heaven, heaven sees that tiny little movement of our heart, that desire to love Jesus, even if we feel very compromised and we feel battered and bruised and we feel that it's very weak. That is the reward of Jesus' suffering. That is what he died for, right? And so from heaven's perspective, it's holy. What I realized in that moment as Jesus sat there enjoying my screaming and crying expression of love for him was he'd made all of heaven go silent and that's when i realized that our weak love for him no matter how weak no matter how compromised the fact that we authentically love him even if it's a flicker is holy it's so holy to him it's why he died to receive a heart that would voluntarily love him in response to his love for us and he makes all of heaven go silent. That's how holy your love for Jesus is. So I came, I came out of that experience, of course, changed. And at the beginning of the, of the birthing of the international mentoring community, this was what Jesus reminded me of. And so, and I was undone by feeling that we could create an environment, a supportive environment, where every week we together we come to his feet we prioritize him and even if you're doing that in your own life you know just to encourage you every day um you know if you want to do this with it with a, with a like-minded community come on board and be with us but in your own life you know every time you set time aside to be with jesus this is how it makes him feel he gets overwhelmed by our love so of course I was I just became even more passionate and that and that everything we create, everything that we're doing would always be with this in mind that this yes, it's about us because we get transformed by every experience with him, right? We, we get completely transformed by every unfolding revelation. And as we are experiencing him and walking in oneness with him and pursuing him, but actually 
this is about him. This is this is being able to create a space where we can prioritize him and love him and and deepen our relational connection with him and our knowledge of him and the experience of his love enter more and more and more deeply in the end it's the most important thing in life isn't it we we finish our lives here and move on into eternity or if he comes back before we, we all that we leave this planet with one way or another is our relationship with him we are being prepared for the culmination of the ages, right? Which is the wedding supper of the Lamb. Which brings me on to the, the next um, encounter. So as we got underway as a community, very early on, probably in October, early October time, again, each week, Jesus has been giving me experiences or all the other um, guest speakers that we have um, that speak into our community. Um, you know, some amazing, amazing um, men and women of God who really, truly live lovesick and you know, absolutely full on uh, prioritizing Jesus as the most important thing in their life. You know, people like Brian Gurin, Eric Gilmore, Justin Abraham, Paul Keith Davis, Amy Davis, Julie Brown, you know, others um, just full on for Jesus, walking that bridal intimate walk. So I always invite people to share who I know live the walk. And so very powerful impartation comes from everybody's lives as we, we have a guest speaker or I'm speaking, mentoring each week. And so each time, as Jesus promised in the beginning, he said, if you will create that space for me, I'll come. He does. And he just takes over and he pours out. And like I said, people have started to have encounters and profound healings, profound healings like massively damaging experiences that people have had in their lives where Jesus literally under the power of his presence as the revelations being poured out week after week they are being healed in their hearts from major trauma from things like um, depression and dissociation where their hearts are fractured and numb from massive pain that and Jesus has come in taken them into an encounter and tr and healed them in his presence and so we've got many 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 testimonies now already of what Jesus is doing is he's healing and transforming his bride as we're together on this journey and it, it is and we do we champion each one of us champion each other on in our walk with him to go deeper and deeper and deeper and it, one of our big values is it's a criticism free zone it's a judgment free zone it's a safe place where we can be raw and real and vulnerable and confidential and pursue him above all else and uh, so yeah so it's absolutely as you can tell i'm passionate about it it's completely amazing so then so then the next uh, encounter that jesus gave me was um, for all of us and again this is for you we we are hearing this in our community but this is for the bride corporately and um i call it the palaquin journey so what happened was uh, there were two parts to this and the first part was um it was the saturday morning after we'd had our our uh, international mentoring community live time which we do on fridays the next morning i was just praying for everybody and praying for the bride corporately and just dancing around my house in worship, mum, around my sitting room. And as I danced, I turned around and went smack straight into Jesus. Wow. Yeah. God, I feel his presence. Just receive that. Receive the impartation that's coming into you right now for encounters. When I share these testimonies, many people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people probably now all over the world, there's an activation anointing on me for you to go into experiences with Jesus. So just receive that for yourself. I turned around and, and Jesus was standing there in the spirit. He reached out his arms, his hands to me, his arms to me. And he beckoned me to stand on his feet, you know, like you do with your dad when you're little. And I, I experienced myself as having tiny little feet in Jesus's huge feet. And he just held me and we began to dance together around the sitting room. And I began to move in perfect synchronicity, moving where he moved, flowing where he flowed. And we just danced around. And then I, and I was feeling his love. And then, and then I realized suddenly my feet had become big, like this, they grew the same size as his. And I was aware 
of as I was moving with him and being filled with his love that my stature had changed and reflected the stature of Christ because of course Christ's nature is within us now. So I then, then Jesus put shoes on me and hear this for yourselves. Obviously every experience I have is, is an invitation for each one of us to step into as the bride. So I put my, uh, Jesus put his shoes on me. They look like boots. They put them on me and immediately understood in my spirit that we are in a time now where Jesus is perfecting our walk, that we're going to find ourselves walking as he did, expressing his nature within us by his indwelling spirit in a way that I think we've not experienced collectively as the body of Christ awakens around the world. Then he put his robe on me and he fastened a belt around me that he called the belt of covenant, which is all to do with his faithfulness as our stronger covenant keeping partner, that it's his strength in us, his support of us, that enables the miraculous to flow through our lives and enables us to walk as he walked. So I came out of that experience just undone again by his love and uh, and then went in, I think the following morning to a second experience. And this one, I saw the palaquin from Song of Solomon that's also called the wedding carriage pull up in the spirit. Jesus was sitting inside and he opened the door to me and beckoned me to get in. So I stepped in and he was dressed as the king. I stepped inside, the doors closed and we, we the carriage began to move. And I immediately just sank into him. I leant my head onto his shoulder and I could feel instantly the sovereignty of who he is as the king of glory and it was filling my heart with security i felt so safe it was absolutely amazing like this if you can imagine having absolutely no fear no anxiety because you're resting in the creator of everything's presence the king of glory who is absolute authority and so my heart began to fill with this profound rest as i just lent and rested on him and the carriage began to move out across the nations and outside the carriage I could see people and fields and nations and then uh, and then I could occasionally see demons and as I rested there I knew that we were traveling through the earth Jesus was showing me his creation and also making me aware that the demons could see us but because I was in the presence of God they could not touch us and that this palaquin journey was a space that Jesus is inviting us into of relationship with him where we literally become untouchable and are cocooned and fulfilled by his love and safe in the presence of the creator, like I said. And then I realized as we journeyed on in the, and I was in this experience that I looked down and my stature had changed and my, I was clothed in royal regalia and I had a crown on my head. And this was happening as I was resting. I was sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into rest and was being transformed in the process. And I knew in my spirit that this space that Jesus was inviting us into, whether you do it with us on the journey of the international mentoring community or whether you're doing this in your own life with your own community wherever you are this is the invitation right now to rest into jesus to step in to the palaquin journey to rest in him and allow him to fill you with the knowledge of his sovereignty with the experience of his love and that this journey will not stop now it's unto the culmination of the ages this is about us being prepared by him sovereignly for the wedding supper of the lamb. And so that's the invitation right now. So we have continued on in this journey week after week with more and more unfolding revelation and our hearts being healed, our minds being renewed, our lives transforming as we do this together. And uh, in it's it's a very, very holy space and it's a very, very holy time. You know, obviously there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pain in many of our lives right now, right across the world. And the wisest thing we could do if is come back to his feet.
And so he's begun to talk to us um, about our authority, about um, us receiving back the capacity now to co-reign with him in bringing forth the redemption of all things, in stewarding the earth. He's been giving us revelation more recently about the fact that the earth is his truly that our hearts would fully realize this the earth does not belong to satan it in any way shape or form and we are awakening all over the world now into the realization that the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and he has entrusted it to us and you know habakkuk 2 14 says to us clearly that the knowledge of the or the experience that word means in the original language of the glory of god is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the seas you know ephesians 4 tells us the one who ascended um the one who descended jesus also ascended to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things we don't know what how that's going to unfold we don't know what that's going to ultimately look like but we can rest in the fact that he is creator, that everything in creation responds to its creator, that the blood of Jesus, it's a finished work on the cross, that he's very good at being God. He is the Alpha and Omega, and he's bringing forth everything, bringing it back into its pre fall state, filling everything with his spirit, filling everything with light. And so and we have the privilege of being invited into being able into that with him that work with him where we can in the palaquin journey we can lean into him we can rest in his sovereignty then we can begin to um, move out with him as he enables us to be to pray for him to see the restoration of all things come forth to uh, steward this planet to see romans 8 activating that this the earth would be set free from its bondage to decay, from its frustration. Again, we don't know what that's going to look like. We just know that is the word of God and that's the invitation in this hour. And so on this journey together, we are learning these truths. We are practicing these truths. We are prioritizing his presence. So come on board and join us if you would like to do that. We would love to have you. I don't want anybody to miss out on this. So you can jump onto the website, lizwright.org and sign up if you would like to do that. Um, you would be so welcome. We are opening the doors again from today for a week. So anybody that wants to come on board, we would love you to be with us. So just in finishing, whether you want to do that or whether it doesn't work for you at this time in your life, I just want to pray for you. That as you've listened to me today, and if you feel to just play this back a number of times, that you will really hear for yourselves what Jesus is saying to you through what I've heard, that you will hear this invitation to come to him, that you will remember that as you sit and spend time with him, that you have the capacity with the tiny attempts to love him to move the heart of God. You, his desire is that you would know his love, really, really experience his love and live in the freedom that, that provides for us, the security and the strength that that provides for us. He is, his love is transformational. His love is, is what we were created to know and experience and live out of the strength of. And so I pray in finishing today that that will be your experience today. I pray for grace in your life that no matter how busy you are, no matter how much pain you're in, that you will be able to carve out some time every day just to be with him, to invest in your relationship, to sit at his feet, and that you will experience his love like you have never known before. And that every area, as he begins the restoration and fulfillment of all things, every area in your heart that is still trapped in pain would be filled with the experience of his love and you would be healed today. Today is the day of his salvation and healing and deliverance and he wants the testimony of his goodness and love to be a big part of your life, that you would be then a living epistle of contagious hope for everybody else that you meet. So I just bless you. Thank you for being with me today. And uh, I, I just bless you. Have an amazing, amazing week. Like I said, if you want to, to be a part of what we're doing, jump onto the website after you finish listening to this or, or click on the link below. And we would love to have you with us. So have an amazing week. God bless. <laughs>